new research has shown that there is a direct link between the health of your gut and how your body burns calories. Is your gut stopping you from losing weight? How can you utilize your gut microbiome to lose weight and fight diabetes? The microbiome is a big buzzword right now. Basically all that means is your inner ecosystem. We have this entire digestive tract from the minute something goes into our mouth all the way until it exits. And the microbiome, our inner ecosystem, is meticulously designed. It needs to be, ideally, for all things to work well, 85% good bacteria to the 15% bad bacteria. Our gut microbiome is a subject that many people are just really starting to tune into and understand how important this living symbiotic relationship is. This essentially is a sentient collection of microorganisms in us that number 10 times our own cells. The gut system is not just your organs, it's not just you know your liver, it's not just your stomach, it's not just your intestines, it's also all these organisms, usually three to five pounds of these organisms that are living hopefully in symbiosis in your digestive system. And they live in the lower intestine, they create vitamins, they help you digest your food more fully, they interact with the immune system and help keep your immunity strong. And I actually think of it as a rainforest. Like you have all of these animals, you have plants, you have trees, you have this entire ecosystem growing all in harmony. There's life cycles throughout all these organisms that allow balance. But when people have taken antibiotics, when they're super stressed out, and eating processed foods and not getting the right nutrients, then what ends up happening is you kind of slash and burn that rainforest and you end up with, I call it the concrete jungle. And so when these bacteria are killed off and the wrong ones start growing, they begin creating various toxins. Their excretions are inflammatory for the digestive tract and it creates like a raw inflamed environment that actually makes the intestines more permeable. So leaky gut, also known as intestinal permeability, is a condition in which the gut is not properly sealed and so we have these contents in the gut that can actually get into our bloodstream. These could be bacteria, viruses, food particles and once they're in our bloodstream and not contained within our gut, they can actually cause a lot of inflammation in the body. So one of the most common causes can be food sensitivities. Food sensitivities are going to increase inflammation in the gut and create more leakiness, right? And some of the most common ones are going to be gluten, dairy and soy. For some people, when they have leaky gut, their symptoms might look like having to go to the bathroom, it might look like bloating, it might have that kind of digestive category of uh, reaction. But for other people, these toxins going into their bloodstream means that they're getting an immune response, they're getting stimulation to their central nervous system. So they're seeing brain fog, they're seeing like agitation, moodiness, um, maybe even anxiety and depression. We know that if these bacteria if they're out of balance, it might not allow us to absorb as much from the foods and thus we'll have a tendency to overeat because on a cellular level we might still be craving more micronutrients that we're not getting because we're not absorbing well. You've got to be able to absorb nutrients, you've got to get wastes out. We are what we absorb, not just what we eat. In order to repopulate the gut flora, I go through a few different very important strategies that you have to take. So number one, you have to bring in foods that the bacteria love. Plant-based foods. Less grains, more vegetables, very, very simple. And another strategy that I recommend for people when they're repopulating their gut is that they need to get some sort of exposure to probiotics. And there's two different ways to do that. You can do it through supplementation and you can do it through fermented foods. Fermented foods are foods that are alive and they're full of beneficial bacteria. They can actually help us restore the balance of microbes within our gut, promoting a more sealed up gut and reducing gut inflammation, reducing intestinal permeability, which then leads to overall health improvement. The answer is to get probiotic rich foods in there, like kombucha like cultured vegetables heal and seal those tissues with collagen and bone broths and really get your gut back in order. Bringing in things like sauerkraut that's been unpasteurized, making sure that there's no vinegar added. Kefir is an excellent source of probiotics. 
Fermented foods are super good for you because not only are you getting probiotics in a lot of the different fermented foods, you're also digesting the food more fully and making those nutrients more bioavailable. So when the nutrients are more bioavailable, your body can actually use them immediately. You don't have to do as much work. I think people really need to pay attention to getting enough exercise. They have to oxygenate their blood. That helps with the microbiome and determines what kinds of organisms grow. And also emotional detox. And this one's more unconventional. Not many people talk about this, but stress is such a big part of what depletes people's gut microbiome. And so emotional detox is a piece that I highly recommend. It's not that hard. It just means letting yourself actually feel stuff and don't be one of those people that's just holding tight onto emotion. Really figuring out how to let go of a lot of the tension that is holding your digestive system hostage and keeping you from being able to digest your food properly and allow for those microorganisms to live. You know, so your intestines are the area of your body that has the most intimate connection to the environment. You know, I mean, you can go out and you can touch a flower, you can touch a tree, something like that, and you're still many, many cells away from that tree. Versus in your intestines, you take a bite of food, you're digesting it, you have one cell layer in between that food and your body, and then that food starts entering into your bloodstream. So in order for people to really have a healthy, strong digestive system, you have to pay attention to this whole ecosystem of microbes and figure out how to get them to be growing in symbiosis, growing in harmony, and that's your responsibility. You're kind of the steward of that. Has your gut been holding your health hostage? Tell us your story in the comment section below. And be sure to grab your two free gifts from us right now. Want to know which foods can aid your gut health? Discover 25 of the healthiest foods to get onto your plate, as well as 10 of the most unhealthy foods to skip with our new book, Superfoods for Diabetics. Plus, get an in-depth look at gut health, how to achieve your weight loss goals, and the steps we should all take to prevent or fight diabetes. Check out the premiere episode of our eight-part series, That Diabetes Documentary. Grab both of these free gifts by clicking the link in the description below. And why not hit that like button and subscribe to our channel so you can be the first to watch more vids like this. We're releasing new content each week. Thanks for watching.